This is what happens whenever you bleach your hair too much. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I was recently gifted some Cara Daily makeup brushes. I just thought this would be a great video to do a full face using these brushes, like only these brushes. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through all of the makeup brush sets and everything that I was sent and just do a bit about Kira herself. So if you're not interested in this and you're just here for the makeup tutorial, I will put a timestamp down below if you want to skip this section here. But basically Kira Daly is a makeup artist here in Northern Ireland. She is based in Belfast. And she also does workshops and makeup training for like inspiring makeup artists and qualified makeup artists. So also before I get into this, she was also kind enough to give me a discount code for you guys. So I will have it listed here. I'll also have it linked down below and I will also have listed down below and linked down below her Instagram and where you can purchase these brushes. So I'm just going to go through all of the collections. So this one here is the Diva Brow collection and this retails for £16. So as you can see whenever you open up the wee box you actually get it in like a wee velvet suede like pouch. I think this is actually quite nice because it will obviously keep your brushes nice and clean and nice and safe. So you basically get a badger hairbrush and you also have a spoolie on the other side. So you also get another eyebrow brush. And also because it has a very sharp, precise tip on it, this can also be used for eyeliner. Back to the first brush, that is the double-sided brush. So this part of the brush is basically so you can feather out the front of your hairs because if you are aware of my channel and my eyebrows, you would know that I like the front of my eyebrows to be more faded, more hair-like and just more gradual, whereas the ends of my eyebrows towards the tail and the tip and the arch, I like it to be more bold. This brush is just going to obviously feather your product out for you, give a more softer finish to the front of your brows. Or if you want an all over softer finish to your brows, if you have actual hair, <laughs> this can also be used for that. So next we turn the brush over and we obviously have our spoolie side of the brush. And this is just to brush your eyebrow hairs into place. And also what I would use a spoolie side of the brush for also is if I have too much product at the front of my brows, I would just go in and feather it out and actually drag it into my brow area towards the arch. We are back to the other eyebrow brush because it has a perfect nib at the front of it and it's nice and sharp. This is obviously going to to give you the most precise, crisp line. And as I said earlier, it can also be used as a gel eyeliner brush. So it's sticking with eyes. This is the Phoenix Eye Collection. These brushes also come individually plastic wrapped as well. I just have taken that off. So in the Phoenix Eye Collection, this is the brushes you will be receiving. The first brush here, this is basically your base brush. As you can see, it is just a big round domed fluffy brush. This is your perfect brush for your eye base, such as a transition colour or if you just want to go on and just pat on an all over colour over the eye. I have quite a wide eye socket. I would actually use this for crease work also, like to blend out a transition colour or to just blend everything all together. The next brush we have is the Shadow Accent Brush. This brush is perfect for an all over a lid colour. If you want to pack on a lid colour, it be a matte or a shimmer. I can do crease work with this brush also and just to blend out edges. So the next brush is the socket brush. So basically this is just like your wee pencil brush, your wee bullet brush, whatever you want to call it. I would personally call it a pencil brush. So basically what this brush would be for is to get right into the contours of your eye such as the socket of your eye and also it can be used for more detailed placement work. Use like a wee bullet brush like this to also blend or a buff out shadows on my lower lash line. Who the hell is my camera overheating already? I've been filming for 12 minutes. The last brush we have in the Phoenix Eyeshadow Eye Brush Collection. This is the Under Eye Smudge Brush. It's just a wee mini smudger brush as you can see. This is obviously thin enough and detailed enough to actually get right in at your lower lash line. I would also use this brush if I was doing a gel liner or an eye coal liner 
in my waterline and I would also use this to smudge that out as well just into whatever shadow I'm going to be placing on my lower lash line. So next we have the Goddess collection and this is for face. So this is what the Goddess face collection brushes will look like here. This is a contour brush basically because it has the contoured edge on it. It is slightly slanted so it is actually perfect to get right into the hollows of your cheekbones. So next we have a rounded blusher brush. I probably will not begin any use out of this brush whatsoever because I do not use blusher. But one thing I will use this brush for that I think it would be perfect for would be highlighter or setting. The next brush we have is the highlighting brush. As you can see this is slightly tapered. This is actually quite a nice size for a highlighting brush and it is quite densely packed just so you get the most intensity out of your actual highlighter. I didn't talk too much about the blusher brush is because one I don't use blusher. This set of brushes here and in my opinion I personally think that this brush is for contour but I would personally use this brush for contour yes and bronzing but I would also use this brush if I was wanting to either highlight but I want, don't want to specifically in one place if I'm just wanting a soft glow all over my skin I would also use this brush for that again with the blusher brush I would probably use this if you're wanting a more precise harsh contour not harsh but you know what I mean quite sculptured as such I would also use this as a contour brush or as a highlighting brush also. So that's why I was just wanting to explain that about the Goddess collection. Whenever you get brushes, you don't need to use them for specifically what they are for because these are, without a doubt, multi-purpose brushes. You know, like you can have like two or more functions for these brushes, in my opinion. You have the Hero brush. This is basically a foundation brush. I haven't been able to contain myself, so I have used this. Just the once <laughs> because I just <laughs> I just had to put this on my face and it was it was amazing. This is the shit basically. The hair is going back, the sleeves are going up. Let's talk about this brush. <laughs> this is what the brush looks like. This brush is so densely packed, it is just the cutest little thing. Ever. Basically this is the ultimate foundation brush, that's what it actually says on the box in case you think I'm just being dramatic. <laughs> I literally just like dispersed any amount of product that I want it onto the top here. Just done like a dot here, a dot here and a dot here and I just worked in circular motions. I had my foundation on within I would say max three minutes. And I am not joking. I'm obviously going to be using it today, so you guys, you guys will see. And this made my foundation spread out so evenly. But this just made my foundation spread like, I don't know. You know, whenever you're spreading a bit of butter on a bit of bread and it just goes on so evenly and the bread doesn't like kick up and roll. This brush. <laughs> Uh, and last but not least we have a beauty sponge which I have pre-moistened. So to start off with I'm going to be using the brow products. I'm going to use the spoolie first just to brush up my eyebrow hairs in the direction that I'm wanting them to go. Then I'm going to go in with the more precise brow and liner brush. And then at the front I'm going to take the badger light brush to feather and soften the front of my brows. I say apologise but my camera cut off on me because it overheated. This is the brush that I used just to carve out my eyes and get that sharp crisp line. This was really really good. I find it quite hard to work with first off because I'm usually used to using a smaller bristled brush. This isn't a long bristled brush but it's longer than what I'm used to. So whenever I'm usually in my eyebrows with the other brush that I use every day I usually have to like pinch the, the bristles at that extremely sharp line, that extreme point 
whereas with this I didn't have to do that. Because of how sharp and pointy the tip and the nib of this is, instead of using the double ended brush at the front here to go in and do like hair like strokes and fade it out and stuff, I just used this brush and I turned it on and the side and I just kind of took the tiniest wee bit of product ever and I just flicked up and done my hair like strokes. Then I went in and I got my spoolie again and I just brushed all my hairs up up the way again just to blend in with my eyebrow more and then I went in with the Badger soft side and I just kind of like diffuse the pomade just so it's more softer and airbrushed so it's just not as harsh. So I will keep on using this one here. This one is also good for what I had just explained there and I also really appreciate the fact that this is a double ended brush. So I'm just going to use the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. I have the tiniest wee bit of scummy tan on. So hopefully this matches me. I got the shade um, 5.0. I'm going to be using the Hero Brush. What I'm just going to do is I'm just going to pump a couple of pumps just onto the brush. So then I'm just going to swipe the product down the way. So as you can see, it is covering it is covering such a wide area of my skin and my face in literally a matter of seconds. So please bear with me for now on the <laughs> the color of my face. That is one layer using the Hero Brush with the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. Do keep in mind that this also is a very full coverage foundation as well. You can see it is just blending out my foundation absolutely flawless and that literally took me no time at all. I would love to know why my face <laughs> looks like fell into a bag of Cheetos. I'm now going to go in with a second layer. See how the foundation layers up with the brush to go in tapping motions and circular motions just to get the product distributed, distributed evenly through my skin. I am obsessed with this brush and I'm actually obsessed with this foundation. It is absolutely amazing but the only thing that's really put me off is the fact that in person the colour of this foundation is perfect for my skin tone right now, but on camera, for some reason, my skin looks orange. I literally look like a Dorito. I'm going to zoom this all in again, just so you can see the finish of my foundation. Pretty flawless, right? So yeah, this brush is absolutely amazing. This is, to me, and the packaging, and everybody else that has probably tried this brush, this is the ultimate foundation brush. And I understand why they call it the Hero Brush. I don't even get this type of finish from with my foundation from a Beauty Blender. The fact that it is so densely packed, and obviously whenever as you're going in circular motions and it's just buffing the product into your skin, it is just it is just giving you an airbrushed finish basically, and yeah, no doubt about it, amazing. I'm going to conceal my Cheeto face, and I'm going to be using the Tarte Shape Tape. I'm going to be using the sponge that I was also sent as well. I hate using sponges that I've never used before. It's like using a beauty blender you've never used before. It's like, <laughs> like how depressing is that? Fabulous. Now on to the face brushes, rice and concealer. I'm probably just going to use the blusher brush. Just take this shade here. I might actually just take a mixture between these two shades. Look at the colour of my face. Seriously, look at the colour of my face. I literally look as if I've, my head has just been set on top of this palette. <laughs> It's 
So I'm just going to set this wee triangle just underneath my eyes. So these brushes are quite nice to use. As you can see, it is applying a lot of product. So the brush itself is picking up quite a lot of product. They are not scratchy at all. As you can see, they are just gliding so soft around my face. Highlight and blush. Yes, I said it. Blush. I'm going to use blusher today because I was looking through my collection and I came across this MAC Kabuki Magic Spring Summer 2017 powder blush um and I haven't used it before but it is quite pretty um it doesn't really seem that pigmented which is awesome but first of all we are going to highlight I want to be using the hidden cosmetics in 24k glow dust I'm also going to be taking this on the actual highlight and brush So first impressions with this highlighting brush, um, from my personal preference, I do prefer a brush that is more flexible and more soft, such as this one, whereas this one is, it is very, very dense. I'm actually going to go in with the base brush from the eyeshadow collection because it's obviously more flexible. So as you can see, like I couldn't do that with this brush, like, no, it's just far too dense. So we're just going to try it again just to see. Okay, it's coming in handy for something. I actually like it for my nose highlight. I think what this brush is would be great for if if you like a lot of precision in your highlight like if you just want to highlight like a wee bit here this brush is for you if you just want to highlight the tip of your nose and the bridge of your nose and say your cup cup your your cupids though this is for you you know like because i like my highlight to be quite diffused uh, i don't know i'm going with the shade and light palette again for my bronzer slash contour. I don't necessarily contour. <laughs> I bronze. <laughs> For contour and bronzer, I think I'm just going to use the lightest shade just in the center there because I don't want to be too crazy. Whenever I'm going in with contour or bronzer, um, mainly bronzer because as I mentioned before, I don't really like to contour because I just don't see the point in it because bronzer does it for me anyway. I like to use like a slightly bigger brush than this, <laughs> um, like a medium sized brush. I like to bronze with nothing that's this big and nothing that's this small. I like something that's kind of in between, again, to diffuse and disperse the colour more. I don't like anything that's too precise, too like chiseled and whatever them I like most of my makeup to be just blown out if you know what I mean so anyway we're just going to go in and I'm just going to chisel this just into my cheekbone area just in the hollows of my cheeks just underlining it where I highlight it just within the contours of my face and I'm also just going to blend this up the way so I'm mainly focusing the product just here but I'm also just going to feather it just towards my mouth area and also blending it up and the reason I like to blend up is because well that is the purpose of contour um, but because I do my highlight first I like to blend my contour slash bronzer into my highlight I'm just going to take a bit on my forehead as well so whenever I'm doing my forehead I kind of like to just stamp the product in and then I will go back and start to blend so then what I like to do is I like to just take like the back of my brush and I just like to diffuse just a tiny sweet bit of colour and just blend everything just down in. I actually didn't think I would like this brush because of the size of it but as I said because it's flexible and the bristles have movement I do like it so you're able to manage the product that it's not so dense that the bristles are just going to be sticking in one area. Blusher. Time blusher. I'm going to be taking this one here. Just going to dip into the 
tiniest bit ever. Like, I don't even know where you put blusher. Um, like, you just... Did I do it? Do I look red? This brush is so soft. Wait, see, I'm probably like putting blusher all over my face. <laughs> so I just went off camera and done my eye. So I'm just going to film this one on camera now. And I use the eye collection. Palette I used today is the Jaclyn Hill palette. It's actually the first time I used this eyeshadow palette, which is crazy because I have had this palette since Christmas. So the first brush I took was the base brush and I just went into this shade here. So I basically just started in the crease and I just buffed this all in but because it's a big massive domed brush this is obviously going to get above your crease and below your crease which I'm okay with because usually whenever I'm working with a transition shade anyway, I kind of like it to be more blown out, especially because today I went with a very dark smoky eye. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't really want it to turn out this um, dark, but here we are. So yeah, that third shade in from the top row, I'm still continuing to just build the shadow up. Yeah, this shade here, and I'm still gonna be taking that on the same brush. But these two shades are quite similar, only the shade I'm going in with now is slightly more warmer. I'm actually just gonna stop there and put um, eye pencil just in my waterline. This is the Makeup Forever Aqua eye pencil. This is by far the best eyeliner I have ever used. As you can see, like it is in, it is still in my waterline perfect on this side, even though I applied that about half an hour ago. <laughs> and it's still as black as your butt. Excuse my creases. And my hairy eyebrows. <laughs> and this one here above the black shadow. And I'm just going to be taking on this brush here for this stage is I'm going to quite heavily pack my brush and I'm just going to place the shadow in my eye socket just right in at my crease not blending or anything just yet I am just setting that shadow just right in there and I'm mainly focusing on this area here because I obviously like my outer, the outer area to be more darker. Yeah, darker. So then I'm taking nothing else on my brush. I think that my eyeliner has the eyeliner has smudged red eye. Yeah. So yeah, taking nothing else on my brush using this steam brush. So with this brush here, I was kind of a wee bit worried to use it because like as a blending brush for my crease and stuff because of the shape of it, because it was tapered in. The more I am actually using it as such like this, the more it's actually, the bristles are getting a wee bit crazy and they're actually expanding. Um, and I'm just getting a better blend out of it. But yeah, like I was worrying a wee bit that it wasn't really going to work very well as just your normal blending brush so then i'm going to go back into that base brush again taking a no product on it and i'm just going to blend again to the bottom row of the palette and i'm going to be taking a mixture between these two shades here still keeping that on the same brush so then obviously because these shades are darker. I'm just going to be more precise in my crease with these two shades. And still just dragging out to the edge. Keep on going back in with the brush that you used the first time. And this is the awesome thing about the size of this brush. 
that it will literally get to every shade that you have put on your eye if you're doing it this kind of look and it will just blend everything. I'm going to swap brushes and I'm going to be using the socket brush slash the bullet brush and again I'm going to be dipping into them two shades beside the black and I'm just going to no if I I'm actually going to go into the black and them two shades and I'm just going to kind of just on my outer V area back in with this brush again and blend your little life away I like to start my blend on my outer corner and then gradually blend it in the way because obviously as you're blending on your outer corner as you blend in the way you're getting less and less and less product because I don't want in here to be extremely dark and I always find it quite annoying I don't know if you can see but I always get like two wee lines that struggle to pick up pigment or I don't even know it's just a wrinkle it's like a big testicle wrinkle that won't fuck off so again, I'm just grabbing that brush again. I'm going to do my lower lash line and I'm just going to use the second shade that we used. And I'm just going to drag that. <gasps> Why is it so dark? Oh, do you know what I'm doing? I'm dragging the black eyeshadow in. <laughs> For sake. Okay. So I'm just going to use the wee lower lash line defining brush and I'm just going to pick up the dark brown with a mixture of the black and I'm just going to keep my op eye open for this and I'm just going to place this as close to the lower lash line as possible and I'm going to bring it right in, not right into my inner corner but right into my lower lash line. I don't really think like an orange face and really dark eyes and blonde hair is a good look. But anyway. <laughs> so I say thank you so much to Kira Daily for her generosity sending me these products. Again, please use my discount code if you liked any of the brushes that I've shown you or if you liked how they performed. So the discount code I will give you 15% off the entire website. So there is also other collections and sets also on the website that you can purchase and use my code. I'm pretty sure on the website you can purchase any of the brushes and the items separately instead of buying the entire bundle. Everybody, thank you so so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to use my discount code. I will have it linked down below. I will also have her Instagram linked down below and her website where you can purchase all of these products if you really want to and I will see you guys all in my next video.